Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tech Down Over. I'm Harold Muliati, co-hosting today with Jeff Blanchard. How are you doing, Jeff? Good, thank you, Harold, and thank you for sitting in for Rick. So I'm sure you'll do a great job. Just don't do too good a job, or else he, he might not let you come back the next yeah. time. So. <laughs> okay, let's start. <laughs> All right, we got a great guest today. Let's get going. This show is sponsored by Relate Corporation at www.relate.com. Your training and video partner. And joining us there in our center position of power, it's our good friend, Larry Becker. How are you doing, Larry? Could not be better. I, um, As we were talking right before the show, I got to my studio and turned everything on with two minutes to spare. So I'm feeling pretty good right about now. Awesome. Pulled in just in the nick of time. Gonna, so that just that just shows your professionalism that you have everything set to a seat so you can just come in yeah. on and it's right. But that's part of the secret as well, isn't it? You be prepared and know what you're doing and know it, know the steps to get started. I was just worried that I'd have to call you guys and say an accident slowed me down, but it didn't, so I made it. Glad to be here and always happy to talk tech. Always happy yes. to Talk tech with you, Larry. So you said you've been, you told us uh, for the show that you've been doing some uh, Canon uh, 90D training, right, for for uh, Scott Kelby? Yeah, over at Kelby One, I um, I wrote a class. Now I have a bunch of camera classes on KelbyOne.com, and when new major cameras come out, I generally get my hands on them as quickly as possible, and then I um, I do a class. And the nice thing is, we when we very first started doing these classes over at Kelby One, they were kind of cookie cutter and kind of formula. And we had, you know, this this class was exactly the same as the next one as, as the next one. But uh, Scott said, "Hey, Larry, loosen up a little bit, and um, you know, you don't have to go through the minutia. Go through the stuff that's specific to an individual camera." that would get a new user up to speed quickly. And and I really liked having the extra license from Scott to kind of flex a little bit within each camera class. And so I ignore stuff that I don't think the majority of people will be wasting their time learning. And, you know, like in-camera editing, if you want to learn that, get the manual and learn how to edit in-camera. But, I mean, seriously, 3.2-inch screen you yeah. don't need to be editing your images within your camera body. Yeah, sure, apply a filter and upload something to um, to social media. That's different. But really editing inside of a camera, that's silly. So um, yeah. I don't teach that stuff. I teach the stuff that people want to know. And then I try and find some tips and tricks and also the standout features on each new model of camera. I was just going to ask you that, Larry, but you answered the question because I was thinking, is there a particular formula you do for these trainings? Because there's so many damn things on there, but I appreciate how you're doing that by picking the key features because, like you said, the instruction book can go a million miles long, but there's so many features on all these cameras that probably most people will not use. They just want to know how to get up and going and how to take a picture don't like you said don't need to care about the little in-camera filters because pretty much i don't know anybody who takes a picture these days that doesn't put it in the computer and do either lightroom or photoshop or or something like that the and then if you do put these in-camera filters and things on it you've sort of uh, baked it into the picture and you can't take the damn things off Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so what I generally do is um, they always break them up into lessons, which is great. So five or eight or 10 or maybe 12 minutes. And then um, the first lesson is kind of, hey, you just got a brand new camera. You're probably really excited about it. Let's jump right in. I used to do, this is the introduction section. In this course, you're going to learn blah, blah, blah. And and it was very formula, and now it's much looser. There is no introduction section. It's just you start right off. Here are the things that you need to know to be able to take a good picture right away, right out of the box. And then, then I start to unpack 
topic by topic. And, you know, there's a whole lesson on video and there's a whole lesson on um, extra tips and tricks that we didn't touch on earlier. Then I'll talk about the focus system. Generally, that takes a whole uh, lesson. And I'll talk about metering and the couple of different types of um, metering and focus and focus behaviors and different things like that. And so once we get through all that, um, then it's kind of fun. I, I uh, try and look for something extra that is special and different about each camera to uh, to let people know about. So Yes, it is. Like you said, with the change, rather than saying in this section you will learn, because it quite amazes me that a lot of people get upset. Well, I didn't learn that. If you tell them that, so, and so just leaving that and just showing you that. So uh, it's great that it's a different format. But do you you pick, is it, is it all just the great features that you like, or do they say, well, just go over the main features, or do you just get the camera out of the box and say, oh, this is the first thing I've got to, got to talk about? Well, what I do, so I, I reviewed cameras for five years um, on the B&H YouTube channel, and I got my hands on every DSLR and and most lenses and most of the point and shoots that came out. So I, I got to play with all of them. And what I got really good at was reading manuals. And then mm -hmm. I also know the features and benefits of so many cameras. And so I kind of know the standout features and I know what things people are going to care about um, that that seem to be the the bonus features or the real big sellers. And so I spent a little bit of time finding out how to best describe those. And then I also poke around in the menus because invariably, uh, you know, the perfect example is the 90D. They've added an additional um, thumb control button, so a little joystick. And so in addition to the control wheel that maybe ADD users are used to. So I try and find those things. And one of the things that I don't do that I used to do in camera classes, and I'm glad I don't anymore, is I would tell people each way you could get to something. So every single time there's a setting that you would want to change, well, you can get to that setting here in menus, or you can press here on the back of the camera, or you can, and I stopped doing that. I just would pick, here's the easiest way. And with the with the 80D and the 90D and, and many cameras now, with the touchscreen, I show if there's a way to do it with the touchscreen and get there fast, I show people the way to get there fast. And there are also a handful of things that I show right away, like on a Canon camera. Uh, one of the very first things that I teach is how to set it so that you don't have to do a button press before you're allowed to move the focus point. There's a there's a setting to go into in the camera body, and the very first thing I do is show people where to do that so that if the camera's up to your eye and you want to move the focus point, you don't want to have to push an extra button to be able to move the focus point. And Nikon has it like that right out of the box, so does Sony, but Canon says you got to push a button first, and I show them how to turn that feature on where it's just direct selection. And um, so a few things like that. Um, one of my other go-tos every single time is download the PDF manual of your brand new gear into your smartphone because mm. you want to have it with you wherever you go. You want the manual with you. If there's some little nagging problem and you're out there in the field, you want to be able to look it up really quickly. And the best way to do that is with a PDF on your smartphone. Well, so it seems and to be a lot of what you're trying to do is – you're, it's not just teaching people to use the camera. It's about kind of minimizing the little frustrations that that pile up, right? Because there's so many things where it's like, if you don't quite know the quickest way to do it, then you're kind of struggling with it. And you're like, oh, why, 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 isn't, it, why isn't it a better way, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the coolest things that ever happened was a brand new Canon camera, top of the line, full frame Canon camera came out. And... Jack Resnicki. And Jack Resnicki is a New York-based photographer, world famous. Um, I am such a fan of Jack and his work. And Jack Resnicki sent me a message on Facebook and he said, oh, hey, Larry, I heard you're doing a, a brand new class on the 5D Mark IV. I can't wait to take your class. And I was like, oh my gosh, Jack <laughs> Resnicki's going to awesome. take my class. I take all of his classes. Uh, I wouldn't miss it. And so that was huge for me 
that um, that Jack would do that. And he said, yeah, you just really uh, get into the camera. You don't you don't teach what is aperture priority. You don't teach what. And I do on on some of the entry level cameras, but on uh, a really high end full frame camera, not just anybody's going to be buying that thing. And if they need to learn what is aperture priority, then they can take a different class. But, um, you know, if you're if you're teaching a very high end camera, respect the people that bought that very high end camera and get into the stuff that they care about. Yeah, I suppose it's a bit. I suppose it's a bit like these people that drive these big B double trucks, these big huge road trains. They don't just go and say, "I'm going." They don't say, "Right, here's a truck. How do I drive it?" They've learned to drive a car or some sort of vehicle before it. They don't just go from not being able to do that. Same thing with the full frame cameras. But I do. I like that way of uh, uh, the lessons about showing what how to get there the easiest way, and I just associate it. You know those books that were out there, was the, the Idiot's Guide to uh, whatever. They used to, I, I wish they'd rename them because some people get a bit afraid to do that, but that's what they do. They show you how to do particular things because I hate some training material I see where they tell you every single thing. And by the time they've got to that, I've forgotten what they were starting to talk about. Yeah. And I've lost it. Refer to section three, four, five, six. And, I, and I've gone to all the links and then I said, what am I doing here? And like you said, you take yeah. it, as I said, where, how to get to that. Well, this is the best way. If, you, if you're if you doing that, you'll find the other way. And you might say, well, that's fine. I'll do that. But you know the the Larry way is the easiest and the best way. So. Well, uh, a tip of the hat to Scott Kelby. I remember, and you guys, I'm sure, remember this way back in maybe the 80s and 90s and into the early 2000s. If you went into a bookstore and by the way, for our viewers who are under 30, a bookstore is where you used to go to purchase part of the internet uh, so you can take it home and read it. But anyway, uh, if you went into a bookstore into the camera section, those are uh, not camera, the computer section, the books were thick. All the mm. books had to be like an inch and oh, a half, yeah. two inches thick because publishers all said, you know, you've got to have every detail and all the <laughs> details. And that's what people are buying is big, thick books. And Scott Kelby, I remember his very first book when he wrote this book about Photoshop and it wasn't real thick. It was detailed enough and it taught well, but all the publishers went, yeah, we're not interested. You got to write a big, thick book. And so Scott came out with it and it sold out thousands of copies mm. sold out and it was self-published and then a publisher came along and went maybe there's something to this and then again to scott's credit he writes a lot of very thin books on digital photography on photoshop uh he, he writes some of the thicker books too but he writes those really thin books and people love them they eat them up and it's because you just teach one thing per page and you're getting through a topic and that's it and then you're done and I also think when you have a th thin book, there's a psychological thing where you're probably more, if you like the book, like, you know, you might like a thick book, you might like a thinner book, but if you have a thin book, you're probably more likely to keep it on hand as a reference because you're like not, you're not looking at it and thinking, oh gosh, this is a, you know, 100 hour read. You, even right. if you're just going in there to, to reference one thing, then if it's such a big book, then you're thinking, ah, it is, it's a slog. <laughs> Yeah, that's just, exactly I'm, right. I'm just hoping one thing, Larry. I just hope that uh, that Rick doesn't uh, go and view your uh, 90D training course because I think he bought the 90D and then I think he sent it back. But after he watches your training video, I think he'll want to buy it again. So <laughs> you never know. I think I think Rick for the kinds of things Rick does, I'm I am blown away that he loves the EOS R mirrorless system. And it's doing mm. so many things for him that he really likes and really wants to do. And I can understand why Rick wouldn't be um, gonzo for a cropped sensor camera that's really aimed at advanced enthusiasts um, and consumers and people that are getting into video. But, I mean, check out what it does for video. It's amazing. It does uh, 4K video. And then it'll do 1080p HD video at 120 frames a second. And that doesn't matter to Rick Salmon because he's not shooting video where he needs slow motion B-roll. Uh, but it really matters to me. Yeah. So um, I, I really love the 90D for that.
I think we have a couple. Uh, t yeah, I have a, uh, a video that I took using the 90D when we had it over here. There's some slow mo stuff. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, I think that's the great. 90. Yeah, it, it's just, just. I think the main thing people's just got to get over is just the the electronic viewfinder. That's the only thing you haven't got through through that. You just have to look at the LCD when you're doing the video. But that's the the yeah. main thing. And if you do get one of those Hoodman things on the back, if you really what's it? Is it the Hoodman? I think it is. Yeah, uh, Hoodman is the yeah. brand. Hood Hood Loop is the uh, yeah. uh, the little. Uh, rear viewer so that's one way you can do it and i love the hood man hood loop and i use them occasionally uh you can also get an external monitor and something mm. like an atmos ninja or something like that if you're really into that kind of thing but for so many users the lcd that's there is going to be fine mm. Yeah, and the price of them—they're so quite reasonable in price for what they do. Like I said, to have that, you've got yourself a really good video camera in there as well as a, a stills camera. But uh, I was just blown away. I thought it would be a lot dearer than it was, but I think it's about twelve hundred for with a kit lens. I think it is there or something like that. Is okay. It? So, so with the eighteen to one thirty-five, the United States price is sixteen ninety-nine, and yeah, the lens on it is the 18 to 135 USM. So it's, it focuses incredibly fast, incredibly accurately and very silently. So your microphone's not going to pick up the little, uh, zoom mm -hmm. motor. Um, but there are a couple other things that are really interesting about that lens only. And specifically what I love about it is there's an attachment you can buy for 150 bucks from um from canon called a pz e1 and it's a little motor that clips onto the bottom of the lens and so one of the things that you can do with starting with the 70d is you could touch a couple of different places on screen and it would focus there and it would do this while you're filming so you could actually change the the object that's in focus during mm -hmm. filming by touching a different spot and it would rack the oh. focus. What you can do now with this PZE1 mount, you know, this $149 um, motor that clips onto the bottom of the lens of the kit lens, you can actually zoom with a motor. So you don't have the shakiness of mm -hmm. zooming in and out and you can change the speed with the motor. You can touch this little button, zoom in and out. And that kind of capability in somebody who hasn't been to school to learn how to rack zoom and, and rack focus, um, it, it's a tremendous addition for those folks like me. Cool. Well, it, it, it is a great thing because no matter when you think you're good at doing that zoom focus, like you said, it's so hard to do that. You think, oh, I can just do that manually. There's no way you can do it as nice as that motor can do it. You always do it too. Oh, you've jerked a bit. And you, you can always tell that somebody's doing it, man, unless you just well, want that quick in there. And especially because a lot of a lot of lenses, especially, you know, ones meant for autofocus, they have such a short, short throw for the focus. So, uh, unless it's got like a pretty nice and long throw, then, yeah, you're going to overshoot when you're trying to. Right. <laughs> Well, and, and this is why they make declicked cinema lenses. So if you want to rack focus or uh, do something like that during filming, it takes practice and it takes very, very expensive lenses. But now all of a sudden it, it's uh, much, much easier. I remember uh, showing a couple of folks on my back when I worked at Kelby and I was running a, a team of about eight people in a video department. My videographers were looking at this stuff and and I said watch I can rack zoom or rack uh, rack focus and or it's actually called pulling focus so I can pull focus during filming watch and I showed it to them and they're like man this is gonna put us out of a out of a job because it lets just anybody do it and they were frustrated and I thought it was great <laughs> I'm just amazed at how far cameras have come come along in such a relatively short time like I've bought my 60d and that one when i went for video you would it would allow you to auto focus but not then then as soon as you hit record it would stop 
you'd had to do everything <laughs> else manually. You could, yeah. And I thought, really, when you think back, says, how could you? But video back on the 60D, it's not all that long ago. Well, that's not really important. You're buying this camera for still. So put up with that. You'll just have to manually focus it when you're going on. But as we get older, we think, like in my younger days, I'd say manual all the time. But now, yeah, I'll do it manually. That's perfectly in focus. And then you look back. No, it's not. So you do right. depend on well, electronics a lot, even though how much you want to feel like that. And now that we're having higher and higher resolution monitors to look at this stuff on, you can see even more how much you miss the focus. Like if you're looking on a 5K monitor or something, then it's like, well, didn't, didn't quite get it that time. Yeah, it definitely shows. I don't know if it's if it's just people like us who like to see all the things in focus, but I look at a picture and I can say, oh, I've just got the tip of the nose really perfectly in focus. <laughs> but you, everything it looks okay, but I can see, look at the pictures, oh, that's terrible. But I think a lot of people just don't don't notice. Now, now how, how do you deal with, I've seen early on in the year when we spoke last time, you've just been to Photoshop world. How do you deal with all the constant updates? Because I, I just get used to something, then they, they change it and all these new things come up. How do you handle that? Do you have a particular process when they do ever all these new updates for the Photoshop? Well, you know what? It depends on the, on the topic. So uh, cameras, I jump in with both feet. I'll, I'll get a brand new camera and a brand new camera manual. As soon as I can download the PDF of it, I love that because I can jump around in the PDF manual. And I just, I really appreciate a good manual from, uh, from the various companies for camera gear. When it comes to other things, um, I was just uploading some stuff to Dropbox this week and they have totally revamped the Dropbox system, how you do the uploads, where you put things, how you look through the files, how you sort, how you even share your Dropbox files. And what they're trying to do is make it into a great system for, uh, collaborative working. And what I'm finding is I like Dropbox. I paid for it for a particular reason. And now I have to go and find videos somewhere and sit down and waste time on my weekends or part of my work day just relearning Dropbox so that I can keep mm. doing what I was doing before. And, and it's very frustrating. So it kind of depends on the topic, Jeff. I, I'm not always sure. Um, you know, some stuff I jump in right away. Some stuff it takes me a little while. I I got a an iPhone 11 after sticking with one with the button on it. I had an iPhone 7 until three days ago. So I just mm -hmm. got an iPhone 11. So I, I was last night uh, spending a lot of time after hours watching YouTube videos, University of YouTube, uh, trying to figure out how to do all the gestures and, and some of the settings that um, that matter to me. I'll tell you what, though, Larry, I went through the same thing with the iPhone, and I was very reluctant to change over, and I thought, oh, getting rid of that button, and i tell you what, after three days of having the one without the button, I, I don't know how I ever lived with doing that silly button, and the face recognition, it's perfect, it's never let me down, I've got a work phone that's still got the button on it, and the amount of times I have to keep keying my thing because it hasn't read my thumbprint or fingerprint correctly, but yeah. with the... Uh, the, the the scan I don't have I've never had any problems maybe once in a while once in a bloom two or three but that's usually when you've woken up you've got your glasses on upside down and you're looking like a monster <laughs> so no, nobody be able to recognize your half sidewards that's about the only time but it's been so good uh, uh, you know I, I thought it was one of those thinking how dare they take our button away from the phone I'll never get used to that but I can with the once I got used to the gestures and that. And as I said, it took me about two days, and it was perfect on that. But I always worry when they say that this is the greatest thing, you're going to love it, and everybody said, no, I hate it. I thought, how do they know it's uh, – sometimes you've just got to take that leap, haven't you, <laughs> and think it's going to yeah. be Yeah, but I, I think one of the things that the younger generation is good at is finding – sources, resources so that they can learn things quickly. And I watch my son do this all the time. If he's interested in a topic or wants to find out more about it, he'll find a video on it and he'll learn it quickly. And that's not what we're used to. I mean, the, the speed at which you have to learn a new piece of technology is increasing. It's not just the cool oh, yeah. new technology that's increasing. You've got learning there and there's a learning curve. And so, 
Um, it, it is good that the resources are out there, but some of it is, you know, it's a trade-off. I love learning new camera technology. I love my new iPhone. That's fun technology. I dread having to find the videos to learn Dropbox. Yeah. It's just so <laughs> annoying. Because there's, but- there's some things that you just feel like, why do I have to do this, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you're not necessarily yeah, I'm not, getting. I'm not, pay, I'm not paying the fee at Dropbox so that they can change everything on me, and I don't even care about the collaborative workspace. I'm a one man show. I don't have yeah. a team of people working for me yet. <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, most of the time it is in, in most people's things. It's just your things that you're interested in, not everybody else. Like I said, a lot of the things about all the collaborative, it always does. Um, uh, I always think. How, is there a lot of people out there using this collaborative space? Because I'm sure a lot of people, when they do work on things, they don't like sharing it, no matter whether they're, they say, I'll give you a copy. I'm not giving you, you're not sharing with me. <laughs> Here, have yeah. something yourself. <laughs> yeah, but, I and what's... I get it about the collaborative stuff. I mean, I worked at the Kelby Studios for 10 years, and we got into more and more and more of the collaborative things, and it was – once we got a workflow, that's great. And if you're in corporate America, one of the things that was so cool about working at Kelby is they set aside training time for employees. Like any good employer, any good company would, they'd say, okay, let's let's all look at the uh, collaborative editing system this Thursday and we'll have some lessons on that. And that's great. But when you're a one-man band like I am, it's it's challenging to set aside time to learn things that you're just not super excited gonzo for. And so, uh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta push myself a little bit to do that. I always find the best way to, if to learn thing is also, if you just have a project in mind of doing something and then you can apply it. Cause I've done that before you go gung ho learning all about this and that. And if you don't have anything to do with it or a project to jump into it, You've forgotten it two weeks later. Whereas if you're yeah. saying, I want, I'll, I've got to take this photo shoot of a friend's wedding anniversary, and, and you say, well, this is what I need to do. Apply it, and then you'll you'll remember it forever. It's a bit like Excel and Word. You can learn all them inside out. But if you don't learn how to do them, do a document or do that, it's in one ear and out the other. So don't yeah. waste your time. <laughs> <laughs> that, definitely true. Well, you know, there, there's going to be a place for educators, online educators for a long time to come because, uh, because of that. The interesting thing is watching the evolution of the training. So we mm. used to go to seminars and then when online video became, uh, pretty ubiquitous, now we go online and we went to online training companies for a long time. And now we're going to YouTube channels and finding independent people uh, because the training is getting better and better and better from independents that are making money from sponsorship and marketing and advertising. So, it, it, you know, as much as anything, it it requires a bit of curation. So what I find myself doing is if there's something that I really want to learn, I go, which of my friends would know this, would know how to do it? And then I would go and ask them, who do you, who do you recommend that I learn this from? And then they would point me to the um, the experts in that field. And in fact, I have some sticky notes on my desk right now of somebody that I'm going to look up their YouTube channel because they teach how to use a particular video editing application on the iPad and work with it wirelessly on some wireless hard drives. And and uh, that, that's something that I want to learn. So um, I go to my friends for curation whenever I can to find out where do I want to learn. And it's great with all the YouTube channels because some of the people who don't do a very good job at teaching you still have some really unique point of view of something that a traditional yeah. trainer would never, ever cover because it's one of those silly. But you think, really, can you do that? And you you might just be that one person who needs that. <laughs> and it, it, yeah. Like I've always you know, said, the learning things, you just, just don't accept one person, no matter how good they are. Everybody's got their own version of it. Well, and on top of that, the um, I, I was, as I mentioned, I was learning about the iPhone 11 and some of the gestures and things. And I watched four or five videos last night, and some were 15 minutes long and some were 10. And one 10-minute video had some really good information in it, and the trainer was absolutely terrible because he was saying <laughs> the wrong things. 
he was describing Ooh. it and and really shortchanging what he was doing. But fortunately, because it was in video, I could see what his hand was doing, where he was touching and what he was doing <sighs> to access different things. And so even though he described it incredibly wrong, the video still worked because I could see it. And, and that's just one more, I guess, feather in the cap of uh, people that are doing video in general is that you show so many things that clear up any questions that arise from poorly narrated training. Mm. All right. So we're just about at the end of our time, but I, I wanted to, uh, well, one thing I wanted to add was, uh, I, I'm just so glad that videos because video training and and you know learning things through video just on youtube or 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 if you're buying a course or something it's become so accessible because i remember before you know like went back when the bandwidth wasn't as good so it was hard to get videos out there and there weren't just weren't as many people putting out videos i would always uh search on and like try to find help forums and stuff to uh i mean i still do that of course but i was yeah. I, I would always try to find help forum topics and what would inevitably happen is okay you find find the topic it's like okay perfect this person has the exact same problem as i do okay that answer wasn't helpful that answer wasn't helpful uh that person has a different problem oh administrator closed the topic because the topic was too old because they don't realize that people will be able to google this 20 years from now <laughs> but it's still, it's yeah. still amazing Still is amazing, Harold uh, and Larry, with the amount of YouTubes that are out there. There's still quite a lot. When you search for a particular thing, it can be quite popular. But there's nothing there sometimes, and you think there's still a yeah. huge market. People say, "Oh, there's way too many people doing it," but you can always. I look for things that nobody's done that. And there's yeah. cert certain things, and you think but there's still that market for it. So never think, oh, why waste your time? There's there's always a reason. You just do it for yourself first. Don't you know? People may watch it if they don't, but don't get the hung. Don't get worried if nobody watches it. Hey, just go for it. Yeah, it's always growing, and I'm I'm shocked. I did some simple videos on my YouTube channel years ago, and I'm I'm really kind of amazed which ones are really catching on and and growing and growing and getting more views and things like that. Um, I did a video on um, how to look thinner on camera, and that one is that still one. getting like comments. And <laughs> yeah, it's kind of kind of cool. I did. I, I saw that one, and, and then I think I think we talked about that once before when <laughs> showing. They it, it, it said, it said oh, "Oh no, I've got the fat lens on at the moment." I think. So uh -huh. Wide. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll link that to so people can go check that out because I know I know you all want to look thinner on camera, so <laughs> you'd better yep. check out Larry, Larry's video. <laughs> it just it's, it's a shock when people meet you in person and you say what is that you <laughs> what went wrong what went wrong but i like what to be as wrong? honest as possible <laughs> yes, I don't want them to say that's not you <laughs> anyway anyway right. thanks again larry for coming on it's great to have you here so i hope you can come back a, another time and have another chat when uh, we're all together yeah Oh, yeah, always speak. a pleasure. Thank you guys for the invitation. I enjoy it. Thank you for coming always on. Fun. We always have great fun talking to you. And we didn't even get to talk about, you know, we were thinking to talk about your your uh, how to be on camera thing as well. I think we touched on it a little bit, but, you know, maybe we'll get to that next time. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got, uh, I've got a book coming out in the next month-ish called How to Be Great on Camera, and it's for everybody, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, because everyone's I'll on camera now, whether you want to be or not. So you'll need it. <laughs> and Larry will be able to tell. He'll say, you'll know if I've read his book. He'll say, ah, he's doing that. So yeah. he'll, he'll know. <laughs> he'll say, he hasn't read my book yet, so I better I better read it because he'll know if he says he hasn't done that. I promise not to call you out. Oh, no, no, I'm self-conscious. <laughs> Larry's been... Uh, <laughs> Larry's been testing us for all of his uh, all of his lessons, so I, I don't think I've been following any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be fine. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining in. Thank you for Larry for coming on. And hey, we'll see you next time on Tech Down Over. Bye, Bye for everyone. Now.